Hi, everyone. Just want to take a minute to run through some um, examples of shadows and reflections that might be helpful in making your um, inserted object look like it really belongs in the image that you've placed it in. I'm starting here with an example of a toy car and Lego guy um, driving down the road. So let's take a look. First off, this is the original environment. Just a road, we see the trees, we see the shadows of the trees cast across the road, right? Our sun is low and to the left and it's casting long shadows across this country lane. Um, this particular student has done a really good job of organizing their layers. So the next thing I have here is a group, basically a folder with a couple of layers in it that include everything needed for the car and the driver. This is basically one image that she cut from another photograph and placed here. There's a hue and saturation layer, just adjusting the color, mostly of the green shirt to make it look like it belongs in this particular environment, sort of a similar green to the grasses and the trees. Um, she's also created a group of layers that do color adjustment. In this case, these color adjustments apply to everything in the image. If I turn that on, you can sort of see how she's tried to unify the colors of the image by adjusting the overall um, lightness and darkness or um, brightness and contrast to bring it all to sort of similar tones. And then lastly, we have a group titled Shadows. And um, let's take a look at how these work. In order to help this car feel like it's not floating over the road, it needs a shadow that touches its wheels. And she's done that, but she's also added some shadows that go over the image, that are shadows cast by objects in the original photograph over the car. If I turn on her shadows group, you can see, for instance, there's a painted shadow here on the ground and some shadows from the trees cast over the top of the car. Those are also painted in. A painted shadow just means that you're gonna create a new layer, select a color that looks like a shadow color, ideally from your image, and paint into that new layer. Um, let me show you an example. I'm gonna hide a few of her shadows here. And um, I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm going to label this. I label all my um, all my layers because at some point you will have hundreds of layers and they're really hard to find and keep track of. All right, so to paint a shadow, I have my layer. Um, I'm going to select a color from the shadows that are already in the image. So in this case, I'll take, um, I have my brush selected and I'm gonna hold the option key down to get the eyedropper. And I'm just gonna click in another shadow here and try to find a nice shadow color. Maybe there. I can see here where that color is in the spectrum. And I can lighten it up a little bit or darken it, but I know that I wanna be roughly in that range. All right, and then I'm just gonna start painting this in kind of making it up as I go, right? Like I know what the shape of the object is and that I want my shadow to look like it belongs to that object. So we'll paint that in. I know I need a little shadow like underneath the car. Um, I need, of course, my Lego guy should have a shadow, something along those lines, okay? But you'll notice when you do this that the shadow itself looks really dense. I can't see through it. Shadows are typically transparent, right? Like we can see the textures and forms underneath them. To do that, I have two ways of adjusting this shadow layer. One is with opacity. So you'll see that near the top of the layers palette. I'm going to drop my opacity down to maybe 60 looks a little light. We'll go with like 70% to start. And um, I also have the layer modes. Layer modes are a way of like essentially saying, I want this layer to interact with the things underneath it and modify them. 
So normal is the default, that's where it'll start. But you can sort of just drag your mouse down this list and see how the different layer modes might look. Um, that one that says linear light is actually not bad. I kind of like that. Um, I often use multiply. That's a really good one. I'll make this a little bit darker. Okay. And so now I've just added a shadow that really starts to ground that. I was a little sloppy with the edges of my shadow. And one thing that can be really helpful when you're putting in a shadow is to put it underneath the layer that has the object in it. So in the case of the car, I might take this shadow and drag it all the way down below my car layer so that I don't have to be as careful with the edges. Um, notice that there might be some other shadows that need to happen on these wheels so that they don't look quite so light against the shadow. Um, but now my, my car shadow is basically on the ground, right? I see that um, it appears that the light is coming from the left and it has cast this shadow here on the, on the roadway. Um, the shadows over the car are done similarly. They're painted in, but of course they have to be above the car layer. And um, so you'll wanna carefully paint in your shadows Get in close, look at the, you know, zoom in on those pixels. I might zoom in over here, for example, and double check that that shadow is exactly where it needs to be. Um, that layer can also be a multiply. Let's try multiply there. I'm just gonna erase a little bit of it on the side. Oops, what is it? change the hardness of my brush. You really do have to have just the right brush so that you're getting the edge that you want. Okay. All right. So that's a painted shadow sort of on top of an object and under an object. Um, Let's see. Okay, let me move on to my next example. This is what I call a flipped shadow. In this case, the shadow is created by making a copy of the object itself. Um, if you have a really um, complicated object, for example, like the swan is a pretty good example here, but you know, a person standing with legs and arms and everything, it might be easier to use that original shape, those original pixels, make a copy of them and then turn them into a shadow. So let's just dissect this image a little bit. There are three groups over here in the layers menu and turn them all off. I have in this case, a white background and the um, first group is all about the water. So this was the starting image. And actually you'll notice if I turn off some of these adjustments, the starting image was actually this really sort of dull water and they've added a gradient fill to add a little more blue to it, change the exposure, that sort of ups the contrast and the levels to lighten it all up a little bit. Um, in this case, they've also added a few swimmers and then we have the swan. So let's look at that swan carefully. Um, there are two layers here in the swan group. One is the actual swan and one is the swan shadow, right? The swan itself was placed into the water and let's see here, I'm gonna disable. This is my mask on the swan. You'll notice that um, basically what's happening here is that the swan, when placed, uh, trimmed from the other image and placed and put here has sort of a hard edge that doesn't look very realistic. So the mask at the bottom, I'll enable that again. The mask at the bottom is softening that edge and maybe adding a little bit of that sort of wavy action. 
in order to make that shadow, to duplicate it and use it as a shadow, I'm literally going to duplicate this layer. So I can hold my control key. Um, I think this is going to be command on the PC. I'm on my Mac. I'm using the control. And let's see. Actually, let's do, so I, I'll do the option. I'm going to hold my option key and I drag and that makes a duplicate layer. Option is sort of like the universal make a copy. You can, there are lots of places in the Adobe software where you'll be able to do that. Um, so option, click on the layer I wanna copy and drag it down and it's gonna make a new layer right underneath. All right, now to make this into a shadow, of course, I have to make some adjustments to it. And first thing I'm gonna do is transform it. I wanna flip it over. Um, it's here, you can't see it because it's sort of hidden on top of the other swan, but it's there. If I take the move tool, I can move it around. We could have multiple swans here. Um, I'm gonna go instead to my edit, transform and flip vertical. And then I will use the transform again, but I'm gonna actually go to um, just free transform. This gives me this box around here that I can, first off, I can move it around. I can rotate it, right? And I can sort of place it so it matches up with um, the original swan. I'm gonna make sure that the one I'm using for the shadow is underneath. So you can see I have my right side up swan is on top. Uh, my upside down swan is underneath it in the layers palette. Okay. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to change this layer that looks like an upside down swan to look like a shadow. And first what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna, uh, this is my simple way of doing it. I lock the transparency. So that's in my layers palette here. Just under those layer modes, you have this lock um, option, set of options. So in my case, I wanna lock the transparency. That's the first little icon, that grid. And I'm gonna take a big paintbrush. I can be kind of generous here with my paintbrush. And um, I'm just gonna paint this whole thing in. But I've locked the transparency, so it's going to keep the shape, right? All right, so I'm like halfway there. I do wanna be able to see through this just like in the last one. So I'm gonna change this to maybe darken or multiply. Let's see. Yeah, I think we'll go multiply and reduce the opacity. It is still very crisp and very hard and it's not actually quite going in the right direction. I noticed from the little shadows on the waves that the light is coming from the right-hand side, um, probably maybe right and um, further away. So let's say like over here somewhere, um, that would explain the shadow on the side of the swan that's facing me um, and the shadows on the waves. So I'm gonna do two things and then we'll be pretty much done with this. I'm going to go back to transform and I'm gonna use distort. This lets me really stretch this in any way I see fit. So if I want this to come back and to the left, I'm gonna stretch it out there. I do wanna make sure it's making contact right here at the front of the swan and stretch out the tail feathers a little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna use a filter to just blur this a bit. There are a lot of different ways I could do this, but I know that I just need to soften this shadow up. So in the filter menu, that's gonna be at the very top of your screen. It's in the gray toolbar. Um, you have a drop down menu that says filter, and I'm going to choose blur, Gaussian blur. Oh, I made a mistake. I can't do that until I unlock my transparency. The blur won't really take effect if I'm locked into which pixels I can paint. So I'm gonna unlock the transparency on this layer, go to my filters, 
choose blur, Gaussian blur. And I can, I mean, I can really blur this a lot. Um, it's too crisp, it's not going to look realistic. Okay. So there is my basic flipped shadow using the existing image and flipping it over to create the shadow layer in the shape that I need. All right. Um, on a very similar note, reflections are done essentially the same way. So here's a reflection of a giraffe that's drinking from the water. The giraffe, of course, has been added to this iceberg scene. So I have my background image. There are some color adjustments made to the background to make it a little more dramatic and some vignetting. That's the uh, sort of dark frame, subtle dark frame around the edge of the image. And then there are two layers to create the giraffe and its reflection. Here's the giraffe set standing on the edge of the ice, drinking from the water. But because everything else in the image has reflections, there are lots of reflections in this water from the ice, I need to add the reflection of the giraffe. This layer that makes the reflection is a copy of the giraffe layer, just like I did in the swan example. Um, it is copied, it's flipped, and then it is distorted using edit transform, right? I like to just use distort. You can play around with some of these other ones like skew and perspective, but um, for me, distort is a real sort of freehand um, I can just sort of feel my way through what feels right in the image. I will point out that that reflection also has a mask because there's an object in the foreground here. If I disable the layer mask, you can see that the reflection would appear to come up over this chunk of ice in the foreground. We don't wanna see it there. It probably wouldn't naturally do that. It's also up on the ice right at the foot of the giraffe and that doesn't quite look right either. So I'm gonna enable that again. And you can see that just by adding a layer mask and using a paintbrush to hide the pixels that were overlapping this ice, I can make it appear that that reflection goes behind the ice. All right, last one. Real simple one, but another thing that can be helpful. In this case, my background image is this um, sailboat hanging out in a, at, at the edge of a pond or something. The composite is this container ship that's been added. In order to make that container ship also have a similar reflection to the sailboat, a flipped copy is added. So same way that um, same way that we did the shadow for the swan or the flipped the reflection for the giraffe, it has been flipped. But because this water has ripples in it, having the like sort of stiff reflection of the the sort of geometric hard edges of the ship is not going to work. In this case, this reflection was modified by using the smudge tool. And you'll see over here, there's a couple tools in the middle of the toolbar. We probably haven't been covered in any of the videos we've watched, but the smudge tool itself allows you to sort of push, think of it as like pushing paint around, sort of like finger painting. So I can take, um, let me get a pretty big brush there. Let's, I'm gonna turn off some of these other layers. So you can sort of see what's happening and click on my container ship. So if I want to push this around, sorry, I've got a, um, I can click and push and it's like I'm stretching that, I don't know, stretching that those pixels or that paint out. Um, there are some settings up at the top and just like all our tools, when those settings, those settings allow you to sort of modify the way the tool works. One of those is strength. 
So if you don't want to push as much as far, change the overall strength of it. And you'll find that it like pushes a little bit more like it's pushing, but then it's running out of paint. That makes sense. Okay. And you might have to do like multiple pushes to get a nice soft edge and you can push in and out, right? Like I can push the paint out into the empty space beside it, or I can push the paint in towards the center. And if we put that all back together, you can see what's going on there. Okay. So reflections and shadows, those are going to help you to really um, ground your composites and um, lock those objects or people into your um, new environment for them. Hope that's helpful and good luck.